So today I've got three gems that came out of one knockoff. This is a good one. I hope you enjoy this one. Hello everybody. Welcome to Catherine Sews. Thank you so much for joining me today. I've gone from sweater upcycling to summer dresses in an instant. It's not summer here yet. It's not summer dress weather here yet, but spring break is coming. So I did do some thrifting, looking for some summer dresses and I found a few nice ones. So today I'm wearing one that I feel really good in. I really love everything about this dress, except I would never wear it <laughs> because it hugged me or I do not want to be hugged. The straps are really skinny, which is maybe okay, but I feel a little bit bare up here. Maybe even just a little wider strap would be good. And I would want the skirt a little bit longer. So you might be thinking, well, Catherine, why did you buy that dress? Because I'm gonna knock it off. I'm gonna show you how you can easily knock off a dress like this, like duplicate it, clone it, and sew it up in your own fabric and customize it in the process. So. I'm going to be able to duplicate all the parts of this that I like, including this pretty print that goes down the one side of the skirt. I'll be able to keep everything I like about it, but make those changes that's going to make it a lot more flattering for me and a lot more comfortable for me too. So there's some cute details that are remarkably easy to sew, like this little scrunchy bit right at the center front here. It's just scrunched with an elastic. The whole bodice part is really dead simple. The skirt is dead simple and it's really not going to take much fabric either. So I feel like if I made a pattern from this dress, I would just make it a hundred times, right? I would just make it out of all kinds of different fabrics, different lengths. I could change it up. I could really, really have fun using this pattern. So that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to start by making the pattern. Then I have this fabric, which you might be thinking, maybe some color would be nice, but I, I kind of like that this is like, almost black on black. So this gray has a little bit more life to it. I think I might make use of the Cricut in my classroom and do a little bit of that kind of florally work that's on the skirt here onto my new dress. I might stick with black. Don't judge me. I do love my black and gray, but I might also take the opportunity to add in a bit of color into that Cricut work. The nice thing about a dress is that it doesn't have to be able to go with any other pieces. So I'm not limiting what I would wear this dress with by adding in extra color. So I might as well take advantage of that chance. So this might be a bit of a long one because first I have to make the pattern, then I have to make this dress, then I have to Cricut it. Might be a bit of a long one, but I'm thinking that the results are gonna be really, really nice. So I'm glad you're with me and I think it's time to get busy. So I have my big cutting mat laying down here and then some wrapping paper. That's what I'm gonna make my pattern on. And then I've got my dress neatly folded in half inside out. I wanna bring those edges together nice and symmetrical. So that is it for the skirt. Like that's a very nice and simple shape. It's the perfect thing to do a knockoff. Of. And I can feel in here that the front and back are exactly the same, except for right there I can feel that the back seam is here, the front is here. So I'm gonna first make the pattern piece for the front, and then I'll just add that line for the back. I go, it'll be very easy. So the reason I want my cutting mat there is because I will be using my sharp tracing wheel. So it works better on a little bit of a softer surface. If you don't have a sharp tracing wheel, you can either look in the description box and there's a link there to buy one of these, or you can just kind of dot with a pin. I've also got a meter stick and my see-through ruler. This is great for adding seam allowances. And when I add the length, I'll use that. And also my curved ruler. And there's links in the description box to all of these tools. I use these all the time when I'm drafting or doing a knockoff. So I wanna start with a nice straight line from my center front. So I said I want to add three inches to the bottom. I also want to flare it out more it's hugging me here, like the first couple inches are fine, but then I want to have it more flared. I want more flare at the bottom too. I think that would be pretty. So I'm gonna just change the angle here. Other than that, this is gonna be exactly the same. So uh, at the bottom here, I'll just be adding my three inches plus a hem. So I'll actually add on four inches. And then now at the top here, I'll just make a mark where this horizontal seam is coming, but I'll do that with my uh, pointed tracing wheel in a moment. This part here is fine. 
And now, if I lay my curved ruler on there, I could either just swing it out like that. That gives me the extra fullness at the bottom, but I'm not sure if that's giving me enough right at the waist where I want it. So sometimes what I like to do is just kind of rough in with pencil what I think would work. And if I've got extra here, then that's okay. I can take that off later. I can always nip it in there more, but I won't be able to add any extra later. So I think that looks okay. So rough it in with pencil and then go in with your good ruler to make a nice shape. I want my curved line here to intersect with the side seam at a right angle. So that should be good like that. And then again, this corner also has to be a right angle. That looks good. All I need now is that top edge, and that's where my sharp tracing wheel comes in. And I'm just going to perforate the paper right where that seam is going. I just did the front, and now, you know what, while I've got it here, I might as well do the back too. Okay. And then I don't know if you can see, but I can clearly see those two lines. The front comes up, the back goes straight. Now, I don't need to add seam allowance here because I traced it in a way that included that little bit of seam allowance and I'm going to be surging this up as well. And so that small seam allowance is gonna be fine. Good, so that's my center front shape. This does come to a point at the front, so that's why this is not a right angle but everything else is a right angle. So there's the front, and I'm gonna duplicate this piece with the lower line for the back. Now, before I actually cut out this paper, I'm gonna fold my paper in half so that I can cut it twice so that I can then just make the back so easily. I like to put a few staples around just to stop the paper from shifting. Okay. So then this piece for the back just comes straight across from the right angle to just hit this curve here. That's it. That's the only difference between the front and back. So this is also a place on fold piece. Although if you are short on fabric, there's no reason why you could not do a center back seam. Just add in an extra quarter inch seam allowance there. If having a seam there helps you place it on the fabric more easily. So the whole skirt part is done and boom. So now for the bodice, I don't really have to fold it in half. I can just use this little line as my center. I, I don't need to fold it to find the center. It's clearly delineated for me there. I'm going to start by just drawing that center front line because that'll be another on the fold piece. Now, if you have a big memo board, like a cork board, it is so handy to be able to just poke thumbtacks through this to hold that all nice and stretched out. Having a big cork board is great for doing knockoffs. I don't have that. <laughs> so I'm just gonna hold it. Well, I guess first I can just draw my line. Now here, I do have to add seam allowance, right? Because I can't turn this bodice piece right side out. I have to just add in my seam allowance. So what I, where I'm drawing is roughly quarter inch outside my seam. There's the actual seam for the side seam there. I wanna just stretch that down. That's where that piece would go if it were not elasticized. And now I need the sharp tracing wheel again. And with it kind of held in that stretched out position, I'm gonna mark my seam. And this is where I wish I had three hands or four or a friend. And then come on up that side seam there. Okay, I can set in a wider strap here. I can make this part wider if I want. Right now, it's set to be like a pretty skinny strap. So if I want to add width there, I can. So we're looking good there. Now, when I did this dotted line, I was right on the seam, wasn't I? So I have to add seam allowance here, but everywhere else I already added it. Okay, so this is not a right angle. We know that. We know it peaks up a little at the center front. I'm going to just do it light, first of all, and then I'm going to add on my seam allowance. And I'm just going to add a quarter inch. So I'm putting that quarter inch line right along my faint line there and just pivoting my ruler so that I'm only ever marking when I'm parallel. That's just such a nice, fast way to add seam allowance. Now my dotted line here is the actual seam, so a quarter inch past that. Good. 
Alrighty, and then I've got these little ones. And all these need is for the lines to be trued, like made nice. And I have to decide, do I want to add a little width there? And I think so. So I kind of just flip my ruler, slide my curved ruler until it fits nicely there. And then here, I might as well give myself an extra quarter inch there, just so I can have that slightly wider strap. Same thing on this last curve, find where my ruler kind of fits. If I can't get it in one direction, I'll try the other direction. Well, it seems good like that. Okay, so this is rib curl, bodice front, and this is a cut two on fold. There are two layers making up that front bodice. Only one for the back, but the front has two. So this is cut two on fold and this is my little folded edge here on fold okay so the last piece is the back and it doesn't have a center back seam so i do need to fold it in half so that i know i'm just tracing half like finding that center and again i will start with just a center back line start with my center back line maybe i'll start way over there Make sure I'm nicely laid out, nice and symmetrical with that center back fold going right along my line there. This is just a hemmed edge on the top. It's not a separate piece, so I want to mark it as is, but then I will add in a good almost three quarters. Well, I'll measure it. I'll measure that. I'll add that measurement above this line. So that is a bit rough and I'll clean it up later. So now again, the sharp tracing wheel goes right along that seam. There. And on these two, yeah, I have to add seam allowance everywhere on here. First, I'll clean up my lines using my curve drill. I don't want to point or peek at the center back, so uh, that needs to be a right angle, even though I've drawn it kind of peaky. I don't actually want to peek there, do I? It should go straight across the center back, and then it can peek up where the strap goes. So I am wandering off of my dotted line a bit. That is okay. I also want this lower edge to be a right angle. Then it curves down. And then even the side seam is super angled. Okay, so now seam allowance here. I just want a quarter inch on that bottom edge because that's just gonna get surged to the skirt part. Good. Quarter inch on the side seam here as well. And then the top edge is where there's that good size hem, which is, yeah, it's five eighths of an inch. So I'll put the fifth line, the five eighths line, on top of my first line, pivot my ruler so I'm only ever drawing where I've got the full five eighths of an inch. Good. So this is rip curl, back bodice, cut one, on fold, on fold. Okay, so the last thing is a little strap. So I'm not going to be making my strap adjustable because first of all, I think it looks kind of messy. I'd have to go and buy hardware like this, like the little plastic bits, and I don't need it to be adjustable, right? When you're making it custom for yourself, you can just make it the right length and it does not have to adjust. So I'm just gonna make a strap piece that's about as long as this piece is now. That brings me to nine. And then going to, let's call that 13 and a half. I'll cut it 14. I'll just write that on my front piece. We've cut straps 14 inches long. And then I can decide how wide. I definitely don't want them this skinny. So the pattern is done just like that. Look at each split. But I just need to double check that it fits together. So the skirt side seams, I know they fit together because I cut them together. But the little side seams of the bodice, that's what I just want to double check before I cut these out. So I've taken my paper and I'm just gonna fold it on the sewing line of this one that's straight, the front, and just compare it to the back. And there is a little bit of a difference. Now I have to think for a second because this one, the front, is just gonna have a little seam allowance 
but the back has that whole big hem that turns. So really, I want that point to match, right? The two sewing lines, basically. So I do have a quarter inch difference there. What I'll do is I'll go back to the original dress and figure out what is going on there. Which one is right, or do I just split the difference? I think I'm gonna staple these together while I've got them placed. And then here is my actual side seam. And I would say that the front is correct. So the back is a little on the skinny side, maybe. Yes, okay. I'll check that center back as well. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna add that quarter inch the rest of the way too. There, that's got it. Okay, now I'm ready to cut. So I don't like to use my fabric scissors on this wrapping paper, so I'll cut that out with paper scissors first. One thing about doing a knockoff is you have to use a similar kind of fabric. So my t-shirt knit is similar in stretch. That's really an important thing. I can't make this out of a woven fabric or a less stretchy knit and expect it to fit the same way. My piece of fabric is a yard long, but it's missing a corner here. It's missing this corner. So it's really not the full yard, but that's still pretty great if I can get a dress out of a yard. So I will add a quarter inch seam allowance to this center back edge. This front I will put on the fold, but it's gonna have to go face down. I'll get one bodice piece over there, like that on the fold. So I'm cutting a quarter inch away from that center back edge because I need to have a seam there. So I just eyeballed it by running this edge just beside my paper, and then the rest is good to go. And my fabric is right side together, so I'm just going to throw a few pins in there before I move it around very much. Because that will be the first thing that I surge together is that center back seam. This is all I have left for the back bodice. Really, it's a little shy, but I think I'm gonna go for it anyway. Of course, I need the stretch to go across the back, so all of this is no good to me at the moment because it's going on the lengthwise grain. I have to get this going across the grain of the net to have the stretch going in the right direction. So I am a little shy right here, but I think it's gonna have to do. Remember that the front bodice is meant to be cut two on the fold. So I will use a different fabric for the inside layer of the front bodice. So I'm sure somewhere in my stash, I'm gonna be able to find some kind of gray t-shirt knit. It shouldn't be too hard to find something like that. So this is what I have for straps then. I need two 14 inch straps and this piece just happens to be 28 inches long. So that's pretty sweet. I think I'll cut my strap pieces an inch and a half wide, which will still make a skinny strap, but not quite as skinny as what was already there. So that'll do for the strap. So now I just have to find the second fabric to cut that bodice out of. Okay, I have looked through my whole stash and I can't find anything like this at all. Like I don't even have any black t-shirt in it. So I'm going to the dress itself. I just put the dress on one more time to see if I wanted to salvage any parts of it before I chop it up to get the inside bodice front. And I think I might get a cute top out of it. Basically, if I cut out the whole skinny part, I'll move this up to that seam. And so I'm not using this whole section and that is just barely enough to get this little bodice front piece cut out of. So I've got it folded on the center back, trying to be nice and even, and here we go. Okay, so let's see. Any little notches I want. I think I'll give myself a notch at the center of the back bodice because that is going to sew to the seam of the skirt. And then I think I'll give myself a little notch at the top and the bottom of the two front bodices. Probably not at the V, that's clear enough, but 
because that's where I'm going to be sewing the elastic to scrunch that up. And then while I'm in the business of doing notches, I might as well put one kind of midway down the skirt just to help me as I'm at the serger. Okay, let's start sewing. I'm excited. Okay, so here we go. I'm starting by serging just that center back seam that I created in the back of the skirt. All of my first steps are going to be on the serger, but anything I do on the serger, you can just sew and then zigzag your edge. So if you don't have a serger, don't worry. So that serging has a nice built-in stretch to it. That's pretty good. I do have the differential feed at 1.25 and that seems to be handling that nicely. Now I open it out and serge the front at both side seams. So I've got that notch halfway down, so I really don't have to pin. I can just get my two corners together here at the top and then find my two notches. Bring those together, edges together, and then serge to my notch. And then down to the bottom corners, put those together and then search to the bottom. Same on the other side seam. And then just like that, the whole skirt part is together. To make the bodice, I'm gonna start by surging across the top edge of the back bodice with the good side of the fabric facing up. At those peaks, I just want to wait till my needles are clear and then lift and turn. I'm going to take that to the iron and press down my little hem. It's going to have a little miter in the hem like that. We'll take care of that at the iron. Also at the serger, I've got my skinny strip for the straps, and I'm just going to put that right side together and serge that whole thing. This is the 28 inch long piece for my two 14 inch straps. And I'm trying to not cut off anything here because it's already pretty skinny. Okay, the strap is together. That came out nice. The nice thing about serging a stretchy strap is that you have that built-in stretch. If I had sewn this, I would really have had to be careful that I used a stitch that had a lot of stretch in it. So the serger does that for you. It's nice. So now at the iron, I'm going to first of all press the seams that I just serged on the skirt. So the skirt seams are pressed and now this little back bodice piece. Get it just all nice and flattened out. And now I think I'll start in the center and I'm just turning down a finger width. It's about five eighths of an inch or one and a half centimeters. Just like that, I'm following the edge. And then the same on these little side sections. I might have to release that surging a little bit, like pull on the surging to give it enough space to be able to stretch out around that curve. So now I'll just be able to sew there. These little miters don't show on the outside, but that's where the strap will sit. Awesome. So that's ready to go to the regular machine. For a horizontal seam or hem on knits, I'm going to use this lightning stitch on my machine. And I'll just use the default setting. I did try it out on a scrap of fabric and that worked just fine. And I've got a universal needle. That is something to test out though. Sometimes a universal needle can leave puncture marks, especially on a more hard cottony knit. But on this very soft knit, it seems just fine. So now with my lightning stitch, I'm going to just sew right on top of that line of serging. And of course you could throw a few pins in this hem if that makes you more comfortable. So the lightning stitch has a little bit of built-in stretch but my serging is keeping this pretty stable anyway. So that is looking pretty good. It's gonna look better once I take it to the iron and press that nice and smooth. 
Do you see what a difference pressing makes? Like it didn't look great and now it looks just fine. I'm happy with that. So now this back bodice gets sandwiched in between the layers of the front bodice. I'll take the matching color bodice for the front. The back is going to go right sides together with that. And this was cut like when I drafted that it really did flare out but now I don't like that little flare so I'm going to drop it off. No problem. There that seems like it'll go better. So now I want the bottom edges to be together but I want a little bit of seam allowance sticking up on the front. That seems good. Now the other thing that's going to get sandwiched in between the two layers is the straps. So let's just turn the straps right side out. This is a loop turner. Can you see it's got a little tiny like thumb and finger there. So I'll be putting that all the way up into this strap and then I want to get that thumb to poke out through the fabric. You can also use a safety pin on a wider like thicker strap like this. But these loop turners are pretty handy for a skinny strap. So once that thumb is out through the fabric then you can close it up like that and you just start pulling it through. A little bit off the end at a time. If you push from the other end and try to push it all up at once it just kind of jams up. There we go. Good. That's my strap. So I'll cut this in half. It doesn't have to be the perfect length right now because it only gets sandwiched at the front. The back end of it is going to be loose and I'll be sewing it there at the end. So I have a chance to sort of perfect the length of it. But right now, let me just give that a little press. So the strap goes onto the right side of the front and down, like totally opposite to how it's going to end up. I'm making a sandwich out of all these layers. The inside layer of the bodice now goes right side together with the front of the bodice. The back and the straps are sandwiched in between. I'm going to stack all those bottom corners together and pin. And then here I want to have the two front corners together, but the back is down a bit. I need that little bit of seam allowance to come around here. The strap is centered there and I just have a tiny bit of seam allowance on each side and I definitely need that. Maybe just one pin in between on the curve there. Bring the V's right together and then seam on the other side. Top corners of the front together, but the back is down a little bit. I need that little bit of seam allowance sticking up above the finished edge of the back bodice. Now I am going to be scrunching this area of the front bodice but I think I'll do that right after this step. So what I'm going to do on this step is at the sewing machine I'm going to go up, around, across, down, across, around, and down all in one go and then it'll all turn out be beautiful. It's going to be good. I'll stick with that lightning stitch but I'm going to lengthen it. I think I'll lengthen it to two millimeters. I'll just try that out. Yeah I think that's not too bad. One millimeter in the width, 3.5 in the length. It has enough stretch. Yeah I think that's going to be fine. So what I want to do here is come up straight and then as soon as I'm off this bump that's when I'll pivot to go around the armhole. Okay, pivot. And now kind of the same thing here. I'll be coming up beside the strap and then pivot and go straight across and pivot again and go down. You can't sew a V shape onto a strap. It doesn't turn properly. So I just need to come up right beside it. So my fingernail helps me to see right where the edge of that strap is. Pivot at the top and go straight across. And then when I'm off the bump, Pivot again and come down the V. Now all those little pivots, that is the only tricky part of this whole dress. Everything else you'll see is going to be just really beautifully easy. Those little pivots and getting those corners right, I have to agree that is a little tricky. I want to make a nice pivot right at the V here.
Wow, what is that noise? Somehow I got a massive tangle on my bobbin. Picking up where I left off. There is a little damage done there. I'm gonna have to just make sure I enclose that in the seam allowance. So I'm gonna let that edge come out a little bit. Okay, back in business. And I've got loads of room on the side of the strap here. I can feel it. Okay, as soon as I'm off the bump turn. Now I'm aiming to be just close to that back piece right there. And then pivot right onto it. Not gonna lie, that was a little stressful. Alrighty, I think we're looking pretty good though. I want to make sure my corners don't look funny. Like that looks a little funny, doesn't it? You know what? I'm glad that I have a different color fabric for the inside of the bodice. Much easier for you to see all my little wobbles and problems. Okay, I'm just gonna shave that little corner off right there. See, that looks better, doesn't it? The V looks fine, and this one looks pretty good. Before I turn it, and I might have to come back in and go closer if I've got a funny looking corner when I turn it, but I'll start by trimming off my excess around the corners just to reduce the bulk. At the V, I just wanna snip right down into the V, last little corner. Okay, I'm gonna pull that out. I should have, theoretically, yes, a nice looking corner where the back blends right into the front. I don't have the front standing up tall. That looks good. The strap comes out, looks totally nice. Nice smooth lines into the strap. I'm getting excited. The V is going to sit nice. That looks good. This strap, okay, I'm batting a thousand now. And then the next corner looks good to the iron okay so now when i press this bodice i want to make sure that there's no little pocket in there that my seam is right out to the edge and this right now is inside out this is the lining piece i want to make sure i see a little edge of gray that way i know it looks good on the outside If my V is not sitting nice, if it's bunching, it just means I need to snip a little bit closer to that V. Everywhere else looks fine. If I've got little corners sticking out, you know, if it's not a smooth line, if it's a bigger bump than that, I would go back in and just pivot a little closer to the strap. But I'm pretty happy with that. On the outside, it's looking good. I don't see the black on the outside. So now, next thing to do before I join the bodice to the skirt is just that little bit of gathering in the middle. So I've got eighth of an inch elastic and quarter inch elastic. And I think the quarter inch is gonna give me more bang for my buck. Either one would do though. I would totally use that eighth of an inch elastic if that's all I had. I wanna be able to put that in a straight line coming right down from the V. So to create that straight line, I think I'll just fold this in half, bring my side seams right together, and I'm just gonna press that line. And then I can see the line on both layers, no problem at all. Alrighty, so back to the sewing machine to sew on that elastic. So I'm using a zigzag stitch that's three by three. And I'm going to start with the lining just as a little test run. So I'll put my little scrap of elastic at the top of that line and just start with a back tack. That's not very wide. I'm going to go three and a half by three and a half. So now holding my elastic right along my fold line, you might not be able to see it, but I can see my crease right there. I'll just hold it straight along that and I'm gripping at the back as well behind the presser foot. And then I am going to pull full width. Like I am stretching that elastic maximum amount. Oh, and yay me. I put that little notch right there. So even if I lose sight of my line, I can see that notch. Good maximum stretch right down to that notch. Actually, I think I'll stop just seam allowance above that notch with a little back tack. And then you see when the elastic relaxes, it just scrunches that all in. That looks super cute. My back tacks look a little messy. 
on my machine. I have the normal zigzag, but then I also have this kind. And you see that little dot right at the top of that? That means it's going to do a little back tack without moving. That's going to be a lot neater looking than the back tack I have. So I'm going to switch to that stitch, but still go to 3.5 wide. And then on my little scrap, I'm just going to make sure that that is going to do what I want it to do. So if I start by holding my back tack button, yeah, it's doing a few stitches in one spot. So that's a nicer way for me to secure the end. Good. So I'm glad I started on the lining. I'm not always cautious like that, but I don't really love that back tack on the front. Same thing again. This time I'm not going to do three stitches forward and then three back like I do on a normal back tack. I am just going to start by holding that reverse button so that I get that nice little back tack on the dot. Good. And then I'm good to go. So I'm holding my elastic to be right on top of that center notch. Just lay it straight, grip the back, and then pull maximum. Oops. <laughs> so let me make sure that that back tack is actually on the elastic. I'm going to stand the elastic a little high and then I'll trim it off later. That might help. Here we go. Try that again. Okay. Now can I pull it without it snapping forward? That feels better. Maximum stretch. Let's now attach the bodice to the skirt. That's gonna be an easy step. That is looking really cute. I'm happy with that. And then I can trim off the extra elastic, just cutting it right below my little back tack. And now here's the skirt part and it's inside out. There's the center back seam. The bodice is gonna go inside there, the center notch of the front, right into the peak of the V. I think my point kind of got cut off because I was so short on fabric, but I should be able to make it work. Side seam to side seam and side seam to side seam. So this just gets sewn around, surged, and then I am going to be nearly done. I think that I give myself a notch at the center back. Yes, I did. That goes to the center back seam. Okay, so there's all my matching points and then one pin in between. Of course, the knit likes to roll, so I just unroll that in pin. I'm not worried about these serger tails because they will get taken care of when I serge around this seam. I think I better sew first just because I need some accuracy right at that front V. So even if I just sewed a couple inches there and then serge around the rest, that will be fine. The notch of the bodice can open up a bit so that I can kind of pivot right there and make a nice shape. So let's go to the regular machine. I think I will just use a regular straight stitch because there's not going to be a lot of tugging or stretching going on right at this V. So I'm just going to use a regular straight stitch. And I think I will just do an inch on either side and then just take it to the serger. Pivot it right at the center just to make that V look good. I'm just going to see what that looks like on the outside. Make sure the shape is nice. Yeah, I think that's fine. Okay, surging the rest. So now I'm going to start and finish at that V so that I don't need to worry about pivoting with the serger. My edge is nicely together. I have to keep the straps out of the way. I'm not ready for those yet. Okay. Now, these two little bumps on the presser foot are in line with the needles. I want to line up the left-hand one with that line of stitching. When I began, I was able to blend with that, and now I want to blend with it again here. Good. That should be fine. I think it's time for me to finally try it on. Okay, I tried it on, and... It's everything I hoped for. It's so comfortable and pretty, so much more flattering now. Just with those small changes, it's everything. Take a moment to admire. <laughs> because I use the exact same technique that they did here, I don't know if you can see the black on black. You can probably see it better on mine with the black on gray. But that technique that was the only hard part of the whole dress where we sandwiched the back in at the side seam, we sandwiched the strap in at the front. That means it's so nice and clean on the inside, right? I like that technique. I think that just looks simple, elegant, clean. But the straps are extra long. So this is the back. And I'm glad that they are extra long because I think what I'll do is tack them to the top and 
also to the seam allowance. I think that kind of makes sense just to support the weight here so it doesn't get too stretched out in this area. I think that might be smart. So I'll do just a little back tack just to the seam allowance. This one isn't going to show on the outside. It's just going to give some support so that the back doesn't stretch out and you know the whole weight of the dress isn't being borne by this. Alrighty, so back to the sewing machine. A couple little tacks there. Then I can cut off the extra. Then I'll go back to the serger, serge the bottom, and sew the hem. Then the dress is essentially done, but then, fun part, cricket. Okay, actually, just kidding, I'm gonna start at the serger, just because I'm set up here. So I'll just serge around the bottom edge. Okay, now to the sewing machine. I'm going to stay on that regular straight stitch. I don't really need a lightning stitch or any kind of stretchable stitch here because it's the full hem. It's not a skinny skirt with a skinny hem that's going to have to stretch. This is not going to have to stretch at all. And on a skinny hem like this, I'm just turning up a little bit more than the serging and I'm aiming to sew right at the top of the serging. And that's going to look good. If I sew too close to the bottom fold, that's when you're going to get that wiggly, funny looking, like curly hem, which I don't want here. So I don't pin this ahead of time. There's just no point. Like you just organize as you go and make a nice shape. If it doesn't look good, don't sew it. So there's the little hem. That's going to look fine after I give that a press. So now just before I run to the iron for the final press, I'll sew the strap at the top and at the top stitch and then just at the seam allowance. Okay, here we go. Okay, there's the top and the top stitch and then push everything out of the way so I can just sew it to the serging. I'm giving it a little stretch because I know that'll stretch when it's on. Both like that and then it's cricket time and the other nice part about anchoring it down there is that this strap is never going to come off i'm never going to have a wardrobe accident <laughs> Alrighty, and i can cut off the extra and because this back tack is just through the surging only then it doesn't show on the outside at all right there's no stitching there so if i wasn't doing cricket i would be done but I'm excited to show you what I have planned for the Cricut work. So here's my dress. This is the original thrifted dress. It was really this print that drew me to this dress. Without it, it would have just been a kind of boring black dress. But with it, I just thought it was cool. And I liked the fact that the colors were close, like a gray on black. So I want to kind of get this same vibe going over here. If you've never worked with a Cricut before, they are quite amazing to work with. So you print these vinyls and then there's a tool that's called the weeder and I forgot to borrow the weeder so I'm just going to use a seam ripper and I've already done all this part but basically you just pull away whatever's not part of the design and it just comes off just lickety split like that. You can make any design you want. Like I love mandalas and I have in my classroom the subscription to the Cricut Design Space. So there are like hundreds of thousands of different images that you can use. There's loads of different texts. It's almost unlimited what you can do. So I searched mandalas and there were so many, but I just liked this one. I thought it was pretty, but I could hear you shouting at your screen that I should add some color. So I did, I've got a couple, like this is the background. And then I've got a few different colors that I'm going to be adding on. They're strong colors, but I'm only adding bits. So it's still going to have that almost black on black vibe that I liked, but it is going to have little splashes of color. And look how satisfying that is, right? So I'm going to take a minute to kind of weed the pieces that I've got. That's what they call it, weeding. And then I'll show you. It just irons on and it is really like pretty darn permanent. The foods teacher that teaches beside me, we did all of her aprons and they've been washed at least dozens of times, if not hundreds of times. And the, um, the little logo that we cricketed on there is still perfect. I do wish I brought that little weeder home though, because it's much better than this seam ripper. There we go. It's so pretty. So I love the black mandala. And then I'm playing around with these 
other shapes to kind of just enlarge what I've got going on. This is the biggest that I can print on my Cricut app in my classroom, but the one on the thrifted dress is much bigger. I started playing around with these little tenderly pieces and I don't think I like them. So these are a maybe. And then another way I might add color is I cut these little stars and circles that I thought I might add on top of this. After I get this on, I'll play around. So I've got turquoise. When I also printed some pink. I might try both, but I can just play. So right now I'm going to take this to the iron, iron that on. You'll see how nice these vinyls work out. It really looks great when it's on. So let's go to the iron. I put parchment paper on top when I'm ironing on the Cricut patterns. I honestly don't know if you have to do that or not, but it makes it a little less scary. But honestly, my students use this a lot and very little goes wrong. So I'm just going to iron that on. You can buy a special Cricut iron thingy. I don't have that and the regular iron works fine, but I have heard that the little Cricut iron works better. I want to iron it enough that when I lift the plastic, the vinyl stays down. I can use a seam ripper to just help it begin. There we go. There we go. Okay. Oh my gosh, I adore it. It's so pretty. Just to be sure that it's stuck down, I'm going to put parchment on top and just iron it now without the plastic. So now I just love it as is. I'm completely crazy about it, but I'm going to try playing around with some of these extra shapes just to add in that little shot of color. I printed this. It was like a preset design and I'm cutting it up. I could have been way more efficient and just made my own little shapes and packed it into a corner and used way less vinyl, but I was in a hurry and I wanted to get home and iron it on. Okay. I like what's going on there with just those little pops of the turquoise. was stubborn. Okay, that's quite cute. Yeah, that's pretty with the turquoise. I'm gonna leave well enough alone or add in a little bit of the magenta. I love it. I think that's so pretty. I cannot wait to put this on and show you. Okay, at the last second, I decided to use some of the leftover little stars right at the neckline just to bring some color up to the top. I think I want to add a little bit of black to anchor that color so it coordinates better with the bottom, but I can do that later. But right now, I got to tell you, I love this dress. I love it way more than that original one that I duplicated. So that's the beauty of knocking something off and customizing it as you go. When you duplicate your clothes, you don't have to make them exactly as they are. You can change the little things that bother you, like this skinnier strap. Didn't look great, right? This strap is just wide enough to cover my skinny bra strap underneath. Looks nice and neat. I don't have to have the adjustable part because it's already adjusted for me. The fit at the waist is so much more flattering and I like the length better for me too. And I had so much fun with that Cricut. That is so nice. I love that. And it's just so fun. Like I didn't want to stop. So this is my new favorite dress. I'm all set for spring break, even though I'm not really going anywhere, but I could still feel springy. Okay. So I had to go ahead and finish off the top. And by cutting out that middle part that was really too snug for me and raising up the skirt, I still get to keep all of that cute printed part, but now it just fits so much better. And I put on the slightly wider strap, which I think looks a lot neater. So this will be just a great little top for a casual summer day, or I can just throw on a wrap and then I'm ready to go out for dinner. And then look, I had this fabric in my stash for a couple of years and I just never found the right thing to make out of it. So of course I had to cut this dress out of this fabric and I love it. This is the winner. I adore this dress. And you know what, it was so fast. I cut it and sewed most of it on my lunch hour at work. Honest to goodness, it was that fast. And it's just that easiest thing to throw on, super for travel, so comfy. And I just love the way it looks. I feel like a million bucks in this dress. Okay, so that's three gems out of one knockoff. I'm so happy with all three, and I'm so happy that you were here with me right till the end. Thank you so much. It always means a lot to me. Thank you so much. I hope you learned something, and I hope you got inspired. So until next time on Catherine Sews, you take care. <laughs>